thinking about starting testosterone replacement therapy and not sure which methodology is right for you, the way you administer your TRT or testosterone replacement therapy can have a big impact on how effective it is in the long run and whether or not it actually works at all. But with so many options like injections, gels, pellets, and even newer alternatives, it's hard to sometimes know which is best. My name is Dr. Taranella and this channel is dedicated to helping you improve and optimize your health. And today we're breaking down the different methods of administering testosterone replacement therapy so you don't need to waste your time and money on methods that basically aren't going to work for you. We're going to look at the pros and cons of each methodology and what might work best for you depending on your lifestyle. We'll also explore the different timing intervals that you want to look at for testing your levels after you're on testosterone replacement therapy. We'll also explore a little bit treating secondary hypogonadism with Clomid and n -clomiphene. So if you're liking these videos and getting a lot out of these videos, hit that like and subscribe button to continue getting videos like this. All right, let's jump into the video. And so we're going to look at five different types of testosterone replacement administration methods. For each of them, we're going to look at how is it administered, how often do you give it, what is the effect, meaning how quickly do you expect things to come on, and what are the pros and cons of each methodology. And then lastly, why would you choose this method over something else? And these are from my clinical practice of administering testosterone replacement therapy for the greater part of 15 years. So the first one we're going to look at is testosterone injections. So testosterone injections are given via an intramuscular or sometimes subcutaneous injection and both work fine. I don't think any methodology is superior to the other, although some people swear by subcutaneous. One would think that subcutaneous injections are definitely going to absorb much slower into your system and possibly not give as much peaks and valleys to your testosterone and corresponding byproducts like estrogen and DHT. I've not seen this in my practice bear out, but it's certainly something to consider. Now with injections, they're going to be given sometimes every couple days to even every other week. The thing with injectable testosterone is you are going to get a fairly quick response. It is being injected into your body, so no question it's getting into your system, but you may have much higher peaks and much lower valleys in between each injection. And so some of the pros, of course, are that it does come on quite quickly and it is very reliable, meaning if you inject it, it's certainly going to be in your system. And that's opposed to some of the other methodologies that we'll be talking about. Now, it does last in your system quite a while as well. And so this is going to vary from one person to the next. But generally speaking, we can expect it to last about five to seven days for testosterone cypionate. And that's mainly what I'm discussing here is testosterone cypionate because that's what I have the most experience with. There are a few other versions that are available and those have slightly different half-lives, some a little bit longer, some a little bit shorter, but they're all pretty similar in terms of injections. So we mentioned the benefits of the injections. It's reliable. It's going to give you a more quicker onset because it's a little more reliable. And then on the downside is going to be more so that the testosterone levels are going to get to much higher peaks when you're using injections and that peak is going to last a lot longer as well. So we certainly don't want you to, be, to have low levels of testosterone, but when you inject about 24 to 48 hours after, you're going to reach a peak and that's going to stay up there for a couple days and then come down. And when it's at that peak level, that's when you're going to have more turnover of estrogen, more turnover of dihydrotestosterone, which is going to potentially lead to some of the side effects associated with testosterone replacement therapy. And you can look at other videos that I've done on that kind of thing. And so when summarizing, why would someone do an injection versus other things? I find that with the injections, you're certainly going to be injecting less frequently. So if you're not someone that likes a routine and is going to forget to put the topical on, for instance, or forget to take it in whatever methodology you're doing, then the injections might be a little bit better for you. If you've tried other methodologies like a topical or gel or cream and it didn't work for you, chances are it didn't absorb into your skin or the dose wasn't quite right. But if you've been frustrated with those other forms, then injection might be the next best option. Of course, you do have to be comfortable with needles. If you're not comfortable with needles, you probably don't want to be using injections on a weekly or possibly every other day frequently. 
frequency. Now, when I'm doing the testosterone injections on my patients, I'm usually recommending at least once a week and sometimes as much as twice a week. That's going to even out some of those peaks and valleys a little bit more. And when you're testing uh, for injectable testosterone replacement therapy, I've mentioned this in other videos, but you want to capture that peak of the testosterone. And so if you're doing once a week, you want to capture the three to five day range after the injection. If you're doing it twice a week, you certainly don't want to skip your dose and then check it. You want to be seeing what's in your body when you're actually injecting the stuff. That's what we want to be tracking. Is your estrogen okay? Is your DHT okay? In those time periods when it's actually in your body. So the second TRT administration methodology that we want to talk about are gels and creams. So gels and creams of testosterone replacement therapy work by transdermal administration. So it's going to go through your skin and absorb into your bloodstream. This type of methodology needs to be applied at least once a day, sometimes twice a day in order to get your levels up. And it does have a fairly short half-life. So within 12 hours or so, you're going to see those levels are dropping quite quickly. The effect of this, because you may not be absorbing it well, or just because the levels aren't staying as high as long, it may take a little bit longer for you to feel the effects of this. I usually tell people about three weeks is the time frame for any testosterone replacement therapy, and it may be a little bit longer for gels and creams. The pros of gels and creams, of course, are you don't have to deal with a needle. And the bigger one is that there's less peaks and valleys. So because it's going you're administering it every single day, the peak isn't going to be quite as high and the trough isn't going to be quite as low. On the con side, you do have to put it on every day and you must be consistent, much more consistent than the injections perhaps. Otherwise, it's not going to work at all. The other thing with gels and creams is it can transfer onto someone else. If you're rubbing it on your inner arm, you give someone a hug, you have skin to skin contact. There's some studies even showing that it can get transferred through clothes onto someone else. And then the last part that's a con is sometimes you're not going to absorb it. You maybe putting it on for two months, three months, or even longer, thinking that, oh, this is raising my testosterone, yet your levels aren't changing. And in terms of absorption, you may want to check out one of my other videos I did on how to improve or optimize testosterone gels and creams, the absorption of them. So just to summarize here, give you the take home message is for gels and creams, you have to put it on daily. So if you're not someone that likes a daily routine or can't follow that, you're going to forget this probably isn't going to be a good option for you. But if you're someone that needs to have consistent levels you're worried about. Your hematocrit, for instance, or high estrogen or high DHT, you, you may do better with a daily cream than you would an injection. Of course, if you're someone that's sensitive to needles, don't like needles, cream or gel is probably going to be one of the better options for you as well. And testing for the topical is going to be around two to 12 hours because that's the time frame when you're going to reach that peak level. And of course, it's going to be higher the closer to the application. So you want to be checking at different time intervals if you really need to dial it in for whatever reason. Most people, you just check or check around two to 12 hours, get a rough feel, and you're good to go as long as it's absorbing the way you expect it. So the third TRT administration method we want to talk about is pellets. Now, I should mention that I don't do pellets in my clinic and never have. I have seen several patients, many patients that have done the pellets in, liked them for various reasons and didn't like them for other reasons. So and we'll discuss some of that here. So pellets are basically like a re really thin and somewhat long uh, oval-shaped pellet that gets inserted surgically into your skin, usually in the buttock area. And once they're inserted, you're going to live with that insertion for somewhere around three to four months. Sometimes they can last as much as six months. I've had patients uh, where we tested their levels six months later and they were still well above what their baseline was. And so I think that has to do with the individual, maybe their detoxification pathways. Just something to keep in mind that if you're getting these pellets, they may last longer than you think. And the converse is always there too sometimes people do run through them a lot quicker. The pellets are certainly going to be a lot more expensive than any of the other two methodologies that I mentioned with the gels and creams probably being the least expensive, at least when you're looking at the compounded options. So the advantage of the pellets is if you only need to put it in every three to six months, that is one of the benefits. You don't have to worry about putting a gel on or injecting, remembering to do all that. And they are said to be a steady release of the hormones. And I've seen people with pellets in with ranges all over the map, sometimes super duper high, sometimes in a more moderate range. So I think it does depend on the practitioner that's administering them to you, how careful they are with that process, and also what you're actually looking for. And that gets into some of the cons too. So it's a lot harder to fine tune the pellets. They only come in certain strengths. And so, and typically they're going to be checking your blood levels maybe once every time you go in. And so you're going to get less feedback on your results. Although theoretically you could be checking them every month throughout the entire cycle 
able to get a better feel. The other negative effect of this is some people will start to build up scar tissue because you are doing that minor surgical procedure each time. And sometimes the pellets can start to build up scar tissue in your hip or glute area. So someone might want to think about using the pellets if they're really, again, not a routine person, don't want to think about putting on a gel. And also that they don't mind about the fine tuning of things. They're not really looking for super optimized levels. They just want to boost their levels a little bit and they may end up with too high levels, but they're not too concerned, not a super sensitive person or worried about possible side effects. Typically when I'm advising patients on pellets, I will tell them to do their lab results about six weeks after the pellets. This is around the time frame where you're for sure in the peak levels. And so you're going to be able to capture any high estrogen or other lab metrics that may be altered as a result of the testosterone pellet. So the fourth TRT methodology that we want to look at is oral tablets. So oral testosterone, it has been around for a long time and it's mostly been associated with problems with like elevated liver enzymes. And a lot of doctors have gotten out of favor of using oral testosterone. In fact, I've never seen it at all, but there is a new form of oral testosterone called testosterone endocanate that is being introduced and studies are finding that it doesn't have the same negative effects on liver values or other things. And oral testosterone replacement therapy is given once sometimes and often twice a day and it passes through the GI system and then gets into your system that way and gets distributed throughout your body. It's going to reach its peak value around two to six hours after you take that capsule. And so some of the pros with this are it's fairly easy to take just like a supplement or medication, take it once or twice a day. And it is going to have kind of a similar effect to the cream in terms of the steadiness of it. You're not going to have as much of a peak in a valley. And on the con side, mostly has to do with the potential for it to affect the liver. But this is honestly not one I have a lot of experience with and it hasn't been on the market very long and it is expensive at the moment. So at some point, maybe that will change. So you're going to want to look at the oral testosterone undocanate if you're someone that likes that kind of convenience. You have really good insurance and your insurance is going to cover it because I think it is quite expensive. And if you choose this right, you probably want to check your blood around the four hour mark. Again, I don't have a lot of experience with this one, but in looking it up, that's around the time when I would expect to capture the peak levels. And then the fifth TRT administration method that I'm going to mention has to do more with secondary hypogonadism. But I should mention as well that there is also an intranasal testosterone replacement therapy. I've used that a few times in my practice and you do have to use it quite frequently, like at least twice a day and has a pretty short half-life. So that may be something to consider as well. Just thought I would mention it to be comprehensive. Now on the secondary hypogonadism is basically that your brain isn't producing the stimulus to your testes. So it's not producing enough luteinizing hormone to stimulate your testes to make testosterone. So this is an oral pill that you could take called Clomid or enclomiphene. They're two separate molecules that have similar activities or the enclomiphene is a little bit more specific to the area of the brain that's dealing with upregulating the luteinizing hormone. This is something that's going to be taken either two or four times per week to raise your testosterone levels. It's going to raise the luteinizing hormone and that's going to raise the testosterone production in the testes. And one of the advantages of this one is you're not going to lose that testicular function in the testes in terms of the production of your natural testosterone. In fact, this is just encouraging that to happen on a more regular basis. Because of that too, you're not going to lose any fertility. In fact, your fertility is going to be much higher when you're taking this medication. Some of the cons of this one, sometimes there are side effects with this medication more so than with uh, other forms of testosterone replacement therapy. Of course, you still can have the same side effects that occur with testosterone replacement therapy, but they're a little bit unique here as well because you can have some visual changes and probably related to how it affects the brain and sometimes headaches as well. The way these medications work is by blocking the estrogen receptor activity. So because you're blocking that effect, you could have some low estrogen side effects as well, like emotional ups and downs, possibly joint aches, and maybe even erectile issues. Those are not very common in my experience, but they can happen in someone that's a little more sensitive to those things. This type of product is definitely going to be someone if that's a little bit younger, a little more interested still in fertility, doesn't want to be on testosterone replacement therapy long term. And for sure, the person that has more of a secondary hypogonadism picture, this is also going to be more beneficial for that person that wants to be able to stop taking it and not have any of the repercussions of lower testosterone, lower fertility at any point throughout taking it or even after. Now, you may still have a slightly lower levels after you stop the enclomiphene or clomid, but they're not going to crash like they would if you're on TRT. Why does this even matter? Why are we discussing this? If you're considering going 
on testosterone replacement therapy, it's going to be something that you're going to be doing for quite a while. And if your daily routine is one that doesn't really involve a lot of routine, you may end up doing something for one month, two months, three months and not get anything out of it. And that could be incredibly frustrating and leave you thinking that TRT is just not the right thing for you when in fact, probably could really help you if you're considering doing it. And that gets into whether or not it's going to be effective in the first place. Part of that is on you to make sure you're staying on top of your administration of the testosterone. If you're someone that has trouble following routines like that, which we all do to some extent, but depending on where you are in that spectrum, you may want to pick a different option that's going to work for you. Otherwise, again, you're going to get frustrated and it's not going to be of any benefit for you at all. Whatever method you're leaning towards, you definitely want to discuss discuss it with your provider and make sure you understand all the ins and outs tied up with, with each methodology. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of the different testosterone replacement therapy administration options. There's certainly a lot to cover with testosterone replacement therapy, and we do have a playlist on the channel that dives into these topics in more detail. If you want to check that out, you just go to the playlist on the YouTube channel and you'll be able to find it there. Now, if you do have any questions about anything on this topic, definitely drop those in the comment section. I'm happy to answer your question. If you want a more customized, detailed answer, consider joining the membership program while I'll have more time and attention to dedicate to answering to your question. Now, one question you might have after watching this video is, what is the best starting dose for testosterone replacement therapy? I address that in this video right here.